Hello, welcome back. As part of the second video in module one uh, with respect to the Databricks course that we have designed, so today we will understand uh, the Databricks workspace in detail. So as you might be aware, uh, uh, when we are talking about Databricks, uh, the first thing we come into picture is the Databricks workspace where all your uh, uh, UI related to the data will be uh, kind of uh, present and you can uh, perform all the all kind of operations. Basically, it provides the end-to-end -end user interface uh, uh, from starting from creating a clusters, uh, running a notebooks, creating a notebook, scheduling the jobs, and uh, maintaining the user access uh, like admin uh, settings, admin related settings. Uh, so, I mean, all these come into uh, come inside uh, the Databricks workspace, and uh, that we will understand in detail, uh, and we will see uh, in detail how exactly it looks like. Before proceeding, if you are uh, new to this channel and uh, I wanted to subscribe for this channel we would recommend you to please subscribe for the channel and also press bell button for instant notifications let's get started before uh, actually jumping to the demo part and showing uh, how the databricks workspace looks like uh, so it is important to understand uh, uh, what is the high level different personas that are present in Databricks workspace. So with that we will see in the demo, but uh, theoretically you need to understand that there are three kind of personas uh, that are present. And the first one and the most commonly used is data science and data engineering, which is uh, specific for creating the data engineering jobs, uh, notebooks related to data engineering, like maybe ETL or ELT kind of jobs or uh, kind of a performing data transformation using Spark or PySpark or uh, a Scala kind of a programming language uh, mostly will be used in data engineering, right? And uh, coming to the machine learning where uh, we can create a machine learning workflows and uh, SQL uh, persona is for uh, ad hoc and exploratory data analysis where you can write uh, SQL uh, queries uh, on the Databricks uh, tables. Now uh, we will directly jump to the Databricks uh, workspace, uh, how exactly it looks like, right? And uh, as you can log into the Databricks, uh, you will be landing to this page uh, of Databricks workspace. Uh, and whatever you see is entire part of the Databricks workspace here. And uh, as you can see, the first, uh, first and important thing uh, is the personas what we are discussing. Data science and engineering, machine learning, and there is one more SQL. Uh, SQL. But the SQL is not displaying because uh, the Databricks cluster that we have created is not a premium uh, version. So if you want to uh, get the SQL version also, you need to create the Databricks with the premium tier, right? And in the data, like uh, before going to the personas, if you can see, this is a home page where it will land and uh, you will be able to create a notebook from here, uh, upload a data and start a ML workflows from here and also create some Delta live tables uh, so basically it is just to get uh, get started if you are new right but uh, otherwise uh, you'll be using uh, uh, i mean the different personas if you switch to the machine learning persona you can see uh, the things which are related to the machine learning and you can see here uh, experiments models and uh, other options uh, which are uh, more specific to machine learning but other options uh, will remain common like workspace workspace repos uh, data compute workflow these are all remains common only few uh, other additional options will be added uh, when we switch to the machine learning persona. But as part of this course, mostly we will be discussing with uh, data science and engineering as we are concentrating more from the data engineering perspective. And next, uh, you can click on new here and uh, you will be able to see the option to upload a file and uh, upload a data and also create a cluster, create a job, create a repo and uh, auto ML and all these options, right? Where you want to get started. But uh, not only here, you can create the uh, things in the wor workflow as well. As you can see in the workflow, there will be two kind of workflow. One is sh shared, other one is user. If you click on users, uh, whatever the users are present in this workspace, uh, uh, there will be specific folders created for each one of them. If you're in a shared folder, you can create a folder uh, inside this uh, uh, or you can create a notebook. Once you click on notebook, uh, it will it'll ask you to uh, whatever language of your choice uh, you can create a notebook right and uh, repos is mainly where you want to integrate uh, your uh, databricks workspace notebook uh, with uh, 
enterprise gate or uh, azure devops gate you can uh, basically give the settings and uh, link at uh, first time with your git and then from then so you can uh, uh, sync all your databricks notebook with the git and also you can create a ci cd pipelines uh, to move the code from uh, one repo to another repo as well and if you click on recent uh, where you will be able to see all the recently opened uh, notebooks which will be easy for uh, comes handy when you are uh, working on the development and uh, when you click on data you will be able to see all the tables uh, which are created uh, within the workspace and also when you click on compute you will be able to see the databricks cluster and you can see the what is the runtime active memory active cores uh, and uh, all of the details you'll be able to clearly see here and uh, as you can see this is an all-purpose cluster right so we have seen in the previous cluster what are the different kinds of cluster right so this is an all-purpose cluster and uh, the job clusters are completely different uh, where we have explained uh, in the previous videos and uh, the workflows right so workflow is nothing but where you'll be able to create a job schedule a job you can run the job ad or you can run the job uh, uh, based on the particular schedule uh, when you create a click on create a job uh, it will uh, ask you to link a particular notebook so here you give a task name uh, and then you have to give the path of the notebook and select that notebook to schedule that right and also you can uh, uh, so this is a since it is a job cluster right you will be able to configure the configuration as per the necessity of the, that notebook uh, to run right? and also you can uh, see in the menu option uh, where you can control this uh, left pane uh, like currently it is like a uh, it will expand only when when you hover the mouse uh, if you click on expand it will always be expanded right you, if you don't want to keep that you can keep it auto so only when you hover it will open up right? and also if you can uh, go to the top uh, corner uh, where you will see user setting admin console uh, manage account as your portal and all so if you click on user setting you will be able to see uh, like uh, you can generate access token i can perform a git integrations notebook setting email preferences and other options and if you go to the admin console uh, where you will be able to see all the users and add the users to the group and remove users from the group right and also in the search uh, you can uh, pretty much search uh, all these things uh, where you can search notebook files folders library repos you can just uh, type in here and it will search uh, so it comes handy when you want to search anything uh, uh, very quickly right so in that case it will be pretty much useful so this is all about uh, the databricks workspace uh, uh, and how to navigate the things and uh, what are the different options you see here right so hope this was useful and thanks for watching